Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us virtually and packing this room. It's great to see so many faces. My name is Monica Rathbun and I'm here with Aaron Stilato. These are our favorite things. This is everything we love inside SQL Server that we can squeeze into 20 minutes and kind of highlight the things that we do and go to all the time. So it's going to be a quick, fun session. Again, 20 minutes. It's going to go by fast. Yep. Really? Let's get started. <laughs> okay, go. So we're going to hit different topics. We chose five. Five and then a bonus. Five and then a bonus. Topics to talk to you about of the favorite things, not only in our personal lives, but our favorite things inside SQL Server. So the topic will be on the top, and this one is trace flags. We like, I like, this is mine, 2371. And it is defaulted in 2016. And it has to do with statistics, which is a love of hers. Yes. Uh, statistics in really large tables. So I want my auto statistics to trigger faster on a really large table. We all know it goes by an algorithm of the amount of change that happens in your table. And then it'll actually trigger an auto statistic. Well, when you have a really large table, to get that percentage of change to kick over the auto statistic, it can take a really long time. Introducing 2371, it changes that algorithm to a sliding scale and will actually update the statistic on that really large table faster. Yep. Again, defaulted in 2016. Right, with compat mode 130. Uh, so I really like 3042. I originally had 3226. I'm going to throw in a bonus here, which is don't write backup messages to my error log Please because don't. it's the error log. I don't want backup messages there. 3042 has to do with backup when you have compression enabled. So by default, when you start to do a backup, it's, it will typically often allocate more space than you actually need. So when you have 3042, it allocates space as needed. I've had to use this with clients when we're playing a little bit of a shell game with space, which is not my favorite thing in the world, but where they've got really, really large backups and it's taking up way too much space and then shrinking it down. So I throw this one into play. Our next topic is DBCC, and we each threw two of these. So you'll notice that we kind of broke our own rules here. The first is DBCC show statistics. As Monica mentioned, stats are one of my favorite things still. Uh, so there's some DMVs that give me the same information, but I still tend to use show statistics as a go-to to look at the header, to look at the histogram. And then DBCC open tran, which is so old school and shows my age. But really quickly, if I want to see what transactions are open, I'll use this. I I know there's a DMV for it, but I don't have that query at my fingertips, whereas this is something that I easily remember to see, do we have an open transaction right now that's causing an issue? I use that a lot. Yep. So mine, I'm a consultant, so I go into everybody's environment and find out what's going on, right? So one of the things I care about is knowing which trace flags are on in your environment. What's on, what's off, what's global, all of that. So I use the DBCC trace status just to see what's on and make sure everything is fine. And when I turn something on, I want to double check that it's still on after a reboot or anything like that that might occur under, um, without me knowing. Now you'll see the next one, DBCC input buffer. I've got a star against that. I use input buffer when I want to see what's going on right now, currently, and I want to see what they executed. Right? I might be able to get the statement they executed, but I want to see the store procedure or object that was associated with it, just in case. Now, all of us use a community tool, which we'll talk about later, SP who's active. And if I have that, then I don't need it, because I can actually get that within SP who's active. But there's some environments where we can't put that in there. We don't have the rights to or it's not already there when we look. I can get that same information to find out where that statement came from using the input buffer. The things that we don't do. We don't do. Do you guys see this list? Okay. I We're know you guys have run this stuff. <laughs> Not just in demos, right? Correct. I know many places that run this to fix problems, but it actually introduces some very large problems. Each one of these, the drop clean buffers, don't do it. The free proc cache, don't, don't do, do it. it. Free session cache, don't do it. And the last one, everyone do this with me, free system cache, don't, don't do it, right? Do not do these in production, unless, unless, unless you might have a problem with shrinking your temp DB and you're in an emergency situation and you may have to go through these in order to free up whatever is holding on to temp DB to shrink. But it is not an all for one where you run them all so you can shrink your temp DB. I do a whole session on this. Um, they're step by step on how to get through all of that. So. That's my only caveat of sometimes when I'll do it. I think I can count on one hand the number of times I've done these in a production environment. Correct. Don't do it. 
Right, so DMVs or system views that we love. Um, again, breaking our own rules, I have three. So DMOS wait stats and DMOS waiting tasks. Whenever I start troubleshooting a problem, right? If I've had to parachute in, hey, things are falling apart, what are we gonna do? Wait statistics are where I tend to go. So DMOS wait stats, I typically also will snapshot this because it's an aggregate, right? Since the last instance restart or since you maybe cleared wait stats, which I don't think anybody does at this point, mm -hmm. but I will snapshot that. Somebody said maybe they do, we'll talk later. So. <laughs> I will snapshot that to see what's going on right across the system for a period of time. DMOS waiting tasks, what do I have waiting right now? So again, maybe I have who is active in the environment, but maybe I don't. And if they don't, then waiting tasks is the quick place for me to go to see what is running right now and what is it waiting on. And then DM exec query stats is gonna be if I do not have query store enabled and I'm not getting query statistics that way, then I hit DM exec query stats. Also the picture at the bottom is this French hot chocolate thing, which this place in Seattle has, and I'm sure there's other, you can go to France from here, but it's one of my favorite things ever. <laughs> Sorry. So mine, I'm all about query tuning. I'm all about trying to fix that long running query that's going that somebody let loose or they free pock cache and all of a sudden I got a brand new plan that screwed everything up and regressed things. I care about query store just as much as Aaron, but it is also one of my favorite things. So I wanna know everything's going on in the environment above and beyond just what this query store picture shows me. I can get into more information with the query store runtime stats. So I can see the CPU, uh, usage, I can see, not usage, the CPU. Um, Average, min, max, min standard max deviation. Min max CPU, right. Um, and then I can see the duration and I can see the IO. And I can see that over time intervals. So I can look to see how long something was running really, really quickly and then all of a sudden I got an increase in IO. And then all of a sudden I've got the increase IO, IO, new plan and then it's down lower. Or I can prove I did something great. I can make a change in your environment and show it was running this long with these run stats. All of a sudden I made a change and now we're quick. And I can prove my worth and show the return on investment for any change that I've done performance wise. So that's a really great one. The next thing is indexes are magic. We actually have <laughs> stickers. If you've been to the community zone, there's stickers there for indexes are magic. And I actually wanna show the index usage stats. I wanna see how many seeks I have on it uh, or scans I have on a particular index. Whether I wanna keep the index because it's getting really great usage or it's not getting any usage at all. As part of being a DBA, you wanna constantly monitor how your indexes are being used, right? And evaluate those. So I use that all the time. And I'm able to take people's indexes down from 900 indexes down to less than half based looking at what is actually being used or change the order on an index because it's getting scans and it was in the wrong order. If I flip the order of the index, I may all of a sudden get seeks and I can prove it. And then cheesecake. I love miso cheesecake. Who doesn't like cheesecake? Okay, so I'm gonna pause for one second because we actually, we can do this. We can do we this. Can. So Monica just made one of the best cases for Query Store and I didn't even prompt her for that. The best thing about Query Store is that you have a history of your query performance, right? If you all think about DM exec query stats, what time does that information represent for a plan? Like, is it a finite amount? Yes. Is it a known amount? No, because it depends on how long that plan has been in cache, right? So that plan could have been in cache for five minutes, for five hours, for five days. Mm -hmm. If you were listening, right when she talked about the runtime stats, you have intervals of time over which you can look at query performance. So that is, to me, one of the fundamental reasons why folks need Query Store. And I just had to shout out to that and also let you know that I have stickers in case you want to get those after. Thank you. <laughs> Moving Wait, on. I love Query Store. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Community scripts. First of all, the community starts with tacos. <laughs> Everybody has to have a Taco Tuesday, so that's one of my favorites. But growing up in SQL Server, I didn't know every single thing that was available from the community. So I would be building my own or struggling trying to find the information or using my Google Foo to find everything. But what's really great out there is there's a ton that the community has done and it's out there for free to make our jobs more efficient, easier, and make sure it's done right because all of this stuff has been vetted. So our favorite community scripts, if you don't use it already, I mentioned it earlier, Adam Mechanics SP Who's Active, who in the audience is using that? I wanna see all the hands. Who in the audience, that was most of everybody, who in the audience doesn't know what that is? We are introducing don't, it don't for the first time. Don't be embarrassed if you do not know. Okay. That's great, wonderful. Oh, yes, we You'll taught you something this. new. You'll you, love this. It's on GitHub, you can go download Correct. it from GitHub for Correct. free. 
and it just installs a proc, and you're able to run it with different parameters. But I can actually run SP who's active, see what's going on currently in your environment, run it with get plan parameter on it, and I can get the plan associated with the statement mm -hmm. and figure out what's going on. And you can actually find the lead blockers Yes. Using SP who's active, parameter find lead blockers. Makes our life so quick and easy when you have a current issue mm -hmm. running. Right. What is running right now? And if you download that and you start running it and you're like, I'm not seeing anything. I'm F5ing, I'm not seeing anything. That's okay, right? It is what is running right now in this moment. So it's hitting DM OS waiting tasks and then joining to all of these other DMVs that we love but didn't have time to cover. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the other ones that we love, Monica talks about growing up with, right? Yes. I grew up with Ola Hallengren's maintenance script. So mm -hmm. I got to meet him once and say thank you so for great. all of your hard work. Uh, I install this on every customer where I'm a remote DBA mm -hmm. because it makes my life as a consultant so much easier, right? So we can manage backups, we can manage integrity checks, we can manage our index and statistics maintenance, mm -hmm. both. Um, default jobs get installed, but you can then go and customize them to your heart's content. You do not need to use maintenance plans anymore. No. You do not need to roll and grow your own no. code to do all of that. Ola's scripts are used worldwide in yep. the largest environments and in the smallest environments. Um, I love going into a system as a consultant and already seeing it there. I know I've got a great customer right away because they've actually gone and, and found Ola's script. Yep. So, yes. So, how much time do we have? We're good. Keep We're going. doing great on time. We're doing great. Okay, so I started out as a lone DBA knowing this much SQL knowledge, and I ran the Port of Virginia by myself, straight out of college with no port experience, whatever. Port of Virginia. Whole port. port. The whole port. Whole port. The whole port. I knew nothing. Had a downtime event where I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. I didn't know about SP who's active. I didn't know who this Glenn Berry person was. I got on Twitter and I said, somebody help me, please, because the whole community is on Twitter. We know this. And I said, somebody help me, please. I need to figure out what's going on with the port. It's down. And Glenn Berry himself hits me up on Twitter and says, I have these scripts. I want you to run these scripts. It actually is numbered one through, I think you might be up to 70 something. I have no idea, it's a very high and number. And you run all the scripts and then you can export it to Excel. He said, send me the stuff, right? And I will tell you what's wrong with your system. So he, I'm just like, oh my God, Glenn Berry's helping me. And we fixed it in no time at all. But what he does is he has these scripts that hit the DMVs. It finds all the weights. It finds anything going on in your environment. SQL Server has all the information. He pulls it all out. Yep. And he gives you the scripts. You can run them one by one. It's Glenn Berry's uh, DMV diagnostic scripts. Highly recommend them. We use them every day. One or two of them are my favorite that I use all the time, uh -huh. usually having to do with weights. Um, and the information that it's provided in there is vast. Right. It's a really good place to start. If you've never audited like your own system, it's a good thing to help you walk through mm -hmm. that. And they're maintained for Azure 2019 all the way back down. Yes. Um, he has so, scripts for every year, every yeah. version, and is constantly updating them. Uh, yep, exactly. So you'll find some of your favorites within all of it. We all have our favorites. I think number 53 used to be one of my favorites <laughs> I use all the time. I know all the numbers. Um, but definitely download those. Take a look. Um, you'll use them all the time. And he has great descriptions. He has links inside of it so you can get more information on what it's showing. It will link to Paul Randall's weights, uh, weights, library. his yep. weight definitions, uh, weights. Library. Library, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, but if you're not using them, huge, huge, huge time saver. I don't like to code very much, and I don't like doing all the joins to the DMVs. He does them all for yeah. you, and you get all the good information. Yep. And then the last one that we wanted to mention, again, we couldn't just pick one. Right. Uh, this is another one that I've used for years, which is SP Help Index that Kimberly wrote, right? So uh, as a consultant at SQL Skills, which was what I did in my previous life, um, indexes are magic. Yes. And when you look at an index in the UI, it's painful to try to figure out what columns are in the, mate, in the index, what uh, included columns do I have? If you run SP Help Index built into Microsoft, uh, into into the engine, that just gives me the key columns. I need to know if there's included columns or not. And there's some more internals in there that I love to see. So SP Help Index is available to download from Kimberly's blog. I use it all the time when tuning. I, have, I even wrote an article about how I use that when I'm doing um, index consolidation, mm -hmm. right? To go through there and like pull out the indexes, drop it into Excel, sort and order and all of that. Um, so one of my favorite like absolute staples when tuning. A step for sure. further than that is she also has a duplicate index oh, script yeah. mm -hmm. that you can go in your environment and find all the duplicate indexes. So you can evaluate how to consolidate all those, what makes them the duplicates, which ones are being used and which ones are not being right. used. From that index, you try to clean up all of that. Because we all know with every write of an index, there's IO overhead. 
right? Getting the fast read, uh, the reads that come through it is really great. That's where the magic is. But you always have, always have to watch for that I.O. when you're doing extra duplicates. Kimberly really helps us out with that. For sure. OK, IQP stuff that we love. First, Bloody Marys. Start my day with a, <laughs> with a Bloody Mary before I start getting into tuning. Now, memory grant feedback was one of the things introduced in 2016, 2017. I 2017. can't remember. 2017, and they keep improving it with all the versions. But how many of you guys have seen a spill in your plans, execution plans? There's quite a few. How many of you guys have seen semaphore weights? Those are all having Those to do with killer. memory, right? So we introduced this intelligent query processing that starts to watch our workloads and starts to look for plans being rerun. And it can actually identify uh, too much memory grants being given, excessive memory grants, or when you don't have enough memory that's allocated to the process that it actually spills and uses tempdb to do your workload. As uh, the engine starts to watch these things, it makes decisions and changes the memory grant on the fly for you. So all of a sudden, when you rerun something, the spill is gone. Or when you need more memory, well, the spill is gone. Spill's when, you give, yep. when you have too much memory, it takes memory away from other things, the available memory to do the processing. It will pull back the amount of memory that it gives it. So it frees it up to other things, right? Then you start to see less of those semaphore weights, and it's magic. I'm a lazy DBA. I love magic, <laughs> right? <laughs> I also love magic and automatic plan correction saves mm -hmm. you time. So this is built on top of Query Store, one of my favorites, right, as we know. So rather mm -hmm. than having to go in and find plans that are problematic for queries or find queries that have multiple plans or regressions, automatic plan correction is going to do that for you. So this was introduced in SQL Server 2017. It's also in Azure SQL, it's in Managed Instance. And essentially, if there's a regression for a query, it will force the last known good plan for you automatically. And then it will monitor to make sure that's a good plan. If forcing fails for some reason, if there's a recompile, it will unforce. But it happens like magic in the background for you. And there's DMVs out there that you can see yep. what things were automatically planned. Yes. Available for you to figure out what's going on. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is our bonus, our okay. favorite feature that's coming in 2022. And I can't cheer this enough. I am so excited. I she love Query this. Store. I didn't this is it. my best thing. I was so happy when I found out about this. But I don't know if any of you guys use readable secondaries. And you've gone to try to get, so they use it for reporting, the readable secondary. And they say a report is running slow or whatever. And it happened you know, yesterday. And you can't really look today because it's not active. I want to go to Query Store every time. I pull up the server and I'm like, oh, it's the secondary. I can't get to Query Store to fix things fast and see the runtime history. Because your Query Store is actually the primary's information coming over and I get so frustrated but they made me really happy and if you've gone to any of the 2022 sessions or there may be some coming up still in the next day or so they're talking about query store on a readable secondary they're making it happen I am so excited and cannot wait I, I, I was jumping out of my seat when they told me about it the other thing that they're making happen is parameter sensitive plan optimization so um, this is something that I parameter sensitive queries are something that I talk about a lot in Query Store because it helps you identify those queries that have multiple plans so quickly and helps you with plan forcing for that and that can happen automatically. This takes it a step further um, and I cannot wait to see what this is going to do for customers in the next year to two as they start implementing it. Um, so again, there's multiple 2022 sessions that are coming up. I think got one today, a couple tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So highly recommend checking that out. I think Pedro's leading those uh, to hear more about these two features. And that's it. That's it, with one minute So we have a minute or so for questions, if you have them, but make sure that you please give feedback. Uh, yes. we're, we're strong women, we can take it. That's right. Whatever it is. And uh, You had a question, sir? Yes. So with parameter sensitive plan optimization, are they upping the number of plans that can be cached? Yes. The answer is yes. Anybody else? Quick question. We probably got about 30 seconds. No, we're good. You're okay. good. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Please do the feedback and have Don't a Don't forget a sticker if you week. need it. Oh, yes. Query store stickers. And have a great week. All right. Thank you. Thank you.